Welcome back to ME 760 Engineering Analysis 1. So uh, we will continue the same business of uh, the uh, operator theory uh, and uh, uh, the linear operator theory and how to use those linear operator theory to solve bar uh, the differential equation that we are uh, just finished the series solution a couple of lectures ago. Uh, before I will continue uh, for the exam, I bought the exam, it is seven problems, hopefully it is not difficult and it's not very easy, it's a little bit moderate, so we have seven problems. Uh, one problem, the first one I think is about the uh, first chapter about the uh, finding the surface equation or whatever. The second problem is about the surface integral. The third problem is about uh, uh, the vector, uh, vector, I think, vector quantities. And then I have a problem about matrices and eigenvectors. And I have three problems. Uh, first order differential equation and uh, uh, inhomogeneous differential equation, I think, and then a series solution differential equation. So I think the exam is very easy. For myself, it's very easy uh, to solve, of course. For you guys, I, I, I think also it would be easy to solve. Uh, if you understand what, what we were doing during this semester, it will not be a problem at all. I expect that everybody will do very well in the class. So again, I have to uh, ask you that you will read the statement in the top of the exam very carefully. You are more than welcome to, uh, to um, work in this uh, uh, exam using books or using, uh, let's say, notes or anything. Of course, solution manual are not welcomed. Uh, you cannot use the computer to solve the problem. You can use it to check for the uh, solution, but you cannot use it for the solution. Um, you have to show me the steps. If you do not show me the steps, I will not give you points. Of course, this means that you came up from air with your solution, and I will not give points. So um, uh, what else? So you have to sign the statement uh, for, um, for uh, individual work that you did your work alone and nobody else did the, the work for you. You did not get any help from anybody in the university or outside, or you did not give any help to anybody else because this, this is a take home final. Again, if I see that there is two papers, they have exactly the same cut and paste or even not cut and paste, but they have similar solution in the steps, I will give zeros for both solutions. So you have to be aware, aware of this regulation of the university. This is a completely completely strict regulation because this is a take home final. Yes. What, what time are you posting? I'm not posting. You have to stop by my office for the online. I will email them the exam and they have to return it back within 24 hours from the date or time they receive it. But for you guys here on campus, you have to stop by by my office. I will print the exam for you. You have to sign it in front of me. Then you take it with you. I have to make sure that you already read the, uh, the stuff and sign it in front of me so that you cannot come after a while and say, oh, I did not see it, or oh, sorry, I did not know that this is required. You have to sign it in front of me. Okay, guys? Okay, so let's continue our business again for the eigenvalue. Uh, <coughs> eigenvalue problem for the operators. So eigenvalue problem for the operator. So we know that if we have operator O operating over a function Y of X, this will give us some lambda, a constant multiplied by Y of X plus some boundary condition if this is the operator is a differential operator. Last time, I stated clearly and I showed also that the uh, differential, first differential operator d by dx is just a self, uh, a, a, uh, um, it's a uh, anti-Hermitian operator, yes? The second, so d by dx operator, d by dx, what's the adjoint of this operator? The adjoint of this operator is just negative d by d what? 
by dx. And for the operator, for the operator d2 by dx square, the adjoint is just what? It's just the same operator, d2x, d2 by dx square. So this is called self-adjoint. Self-adjoint or Hermitian, like the Hermitian matrix. Uh, that was started earlier before, and this is anti anti Hermitian operator. And if you go and continue this same business of the operator is d3 by dx cubed, you will notice that the adjoint operator is just negative the operator itself, and this will give you a negative d cubed by dx cubed, and this is again anti Hermitian, so we will notice that the uh, even number uh, derivative will be a Hermitian operator, the odd number derivatives will be uh, anti Hermitian operators. So now if we have an operator equation like this where lambdas are lambdas are the eigenvalues and usually generally for this equation you will have uh, only y equal to zero is the trivial solution for those equation. If you substitute here was y equal to zero, it will satisfy both left hand side and right hand side, but we are seeking a solution that that's not the trivial solution for this equation. So the operator O is any linear is any linear real so we are talking about real not complex operator and this operator usually maps maps y of x into lambda y of x or more generally, when we will write this operator function, the operator O applied over Y of X will be equal to lambda, some weighting function, omega of X multiplied by Y of X. So this is, this is the general operator equation here, where omega of X is <coughs> a weighting, weighting function. It is positive real function. So if we take an example here for this operator equation, if you remember y double prime, the differential equation, equal to minus lambda square y of x, whereas the boundary conditions y of x equal to by equal to y of negative by and y prime of by equal to y prime of negative by and lambda square usually this lambda square can be either a positive or negative number of course if it is a negative number this means that lambda is what? Huh? if it is negative number lambda square is if it is negative Lambda is what? Complex. This is imaginary, imaginary number. Okay, guys. So let's look for the solution for this equation if lambda square is less than zero. So in this case, we will just let lambda square equal to negative new square. And again, what's the operator in this operator equation? d2 by what? dx squared, and we showed that this operator is what? Is a self-adjoint operator. What does it mean self-adjoint? That the adjoint of this operator is the same like the operator itself, and this is Hermitian, Hermitian operator. So when we let uh, the lambda squared equal to 
uh, negative new square, we will have the equation rewritten again, and this will give us uh, y double prime equal to new square multiplied by y, and this is equal to zero. So, what's the solution for this for this equation? What do you think? So the general solution will be just what? Y of X equal to some A e to the power of what? New X plus B e to the power of minus new what? New X. Then we have to apply the power in three conditions. When we apply the boundary condition, we said that y at uh, omega equal to y at negative omega. So this will give you a e to the power of nu by plus b e to the power of minus nu by, and this is equal to a e to the power of minus nu by plus b e to the power of minus nu plus nu by. And this is the first boundary condition, y of y equal to y of negative y. Second boundary condition, y prime of y equal to y prime of negative y. <coughs> so what's y prime from here? Just a multiplied by nu, because you have to differentiate this with respect to what? With x. And this is will give you e to the power of nu multiplied by by b e to the power of minus nu here e to the power of minus nu multiplied by by and this is equal to negative a multiplied by uh, positive a multiplied by nu multiplied by what e to the power of minus nu by minus b nu e to the power of plus nu by. How to solve for a and b is from here? So you can rewrite those, those two equations. You can write them in a matrix form. as what? As A multiplied by e to the power of what? Nu by minus e to the power of minus nu by plus B e to the power of minus nu by minus e to the power of nu by. This is equal to zero. This is the first equation. And the second equation is just a e to the power of nu by minus e to the power of minus nu by plus b e to the power of nu by minus e to the power of minus nu by. And this is equal to 0. So for non-trivial solution we require the determinant we do not need a and b to be equal to zero otherwise we will have the trivial solution so we have the determinant for those uh, elements here a11, a12, a21 a to 2 should equal to what? Should equal to 0 for non-trivial solution. Yes? So what's the determinant? Will be this term by this term minus this term by this term. Yes, guys? So if, if you evaluate this, this will give you what? E to the power of nu by minus e to the power of minus nu by 
when you multiply it by this, will give you square minus, multiply the second term. This will give you what? The second term, e to the power of nu by minus e to the power of minus nu by all square. This is, there is a plus sign here. Okay, guys? Because there is minus this multiplied by this, but this is the opposite of this, so you take a minus sign outside, so minus minus will be plus. Okay, guys? And this will equal what? Nope. This will equal 2 the square bracket. 2. This is equal to what? 2 the square bracket of what? e to the power of nu i by e to the power of minus nu by all square. So what about this? This is a number less than what? Less than 1. Yes? And this is a number greater than? <laughs> greater than? one. So the difference will be what? A positive number. So this is greater than greater than zero. So the determinant does not equal to zero. So we do not have a solution. But the trivial solution. Yes? So for this case the only the only trivial solution which is A equal to B equal to zero exists. Yes? Because the determinant does not equal to zero. And this is obvious. Your lambda was what? Complex, imaginary number. If lambda is negative, lambda square is negative, Lambda is what? Complex number, and you do not expect that you will have a solution for this case. <laughs> okay, guys? Now we have to look for if lambda is what? If lambda square is what? Is positive number, and in this case my equation is what? Y double prime plus lambda square y equal to zero. What's the solution for this equation? We have been solving this equation for several times. No, not E. This is the, the simple harmonic motion. So this is what? Y of X is equal to A cosine lambda X plus B sine lambda X because this is Y double prime equal to negative lambda square multiplied by Y. So this is the simple harmonic motion. You get y of x equal to the combination of the sine and sine and cosine. So now, apply the boundary condition. We'll apply the boundary conditions. When you apply the boundary condition, you have y of y equal to y of negative y, this will give us A cosine lambda y plus B sine lambda y. Okay, guys? Equal to what? Equal to A cosine negative lambda y plus B sine negative lambda by. What's cosine lambda by minus? Cosine minus sine is what? Minus. Cosine minus something is what? It's the cosine of the same thing because the cosine is an even function. So it is the cosine. So if you are here, cosine of negative x is exactly the same like cosine x. They are exactly the same. So you expect that this will be what? Equal to cosine lambda what? Lambda by. What about sine? Sine is 
So the sign here of negative is negative what? Negative the sine of x. So this would be what? Expect that this would be negative sine what? Lambda by. Okay, guys. So this is the first boundary condition. Second boundary condition y prime of y of by equal to y prime of negative by. And if you do this, you will obtain what? Negative lambda a sine of lambda by plus b lambda cosine of lambda by. And this is equal to negative a lambda sine negative lambda by plus b lambda cosine of negative lambda by. Again, this is equal to what? Negative sine lambda by, and this is equal to what? Cosine lambda by. Okay, so now we can rewrite those two equations on a matrix format. So this will be A multiplied by 0 plus B multiplied by 2 sine lambda by, and this is equal to 0. The other equation will be negative A multiplied by 2 sine lambda by plus b multiplied by 0 equal to 0. So we have the determinant in order to get the non-trivial solution must equal to what? 0. If you multiply this by this is 0. This by this will give you what? a, b multiplied by 4 multiplied by sine where lambda what? Lambda by. So it is either A equal to B equal to zero, and this is what? Trivial solution. Or sine lambda by equal to what? To zero. And in this case, if you have sine lambda by equal to zero, this means that lambda is equal to what? Zero plus or minus one plus or minus two and so on. And the corresponding solutions will be just what? Will be just cosine lambda what? Lambda x when lambda would be just 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Or it will be sine lambda x when lambda would be equal to what? 1, 2, 3, and so on. So those are what? Eigen what? Eigen functions. And those are what? Eigen what? Eigen values. Corresponding Eigen values. <coughs> what happens if you change the sign? If lambda is equal to negative n, for example. So if lambda is negative, this will give you what? Negative n, for example, gives the same lambda as lambda equal to what? As lambda equal to n. And for the sign, if, if lambda equal to negative n, will give you what? Negative sine of lambda n, so they will give you a set also of linearly independent solutions. But the most fundamental linearly independent solution for the equation is just the sine and what? The sine and what? And the cosine. Sine and cosine. And this is why you'll note that it is exactly the same like the matrices 
when we have a uh, uh, linearly independent vectors, those linearly independent vectors, they will, will form the base, what? The base vectors in the, in the linear vector space. And we can expand any vector in terms of those linearly independent vectors. So it is exactly the same here. We have what? Linearly independent functions. And we can, in principle, expand any function in terms of those function as an expansion of function. So if we will be, for example, expanding function f of x in terms of sine and cosine, this will give us what? The Fourier, Fourier series. Yes? So we will, we will during this, this uh, lecture, and maybe next lecture, we will see that you can represent the eigenfunctions in this case might be um, uh, uh, Bissell functions, maybe Legere functions, maybe uh, uh, Legendre polynomial or whatever, so you can expand your, fun your function with respect to those. So let's now look at the eigen the eigenfunctions of a real linear self-adjoint self-adjoint operator. Self-adjoint means permission operator. So to look at <coughs> the operator equation O operated over certain function y n of x would be equal to lambda n which is the corresponding eigenvalues multiplied by the same weighting function that we talked about last time y of x multiplied by the function y of x and this is defined here this is so O is any any linear operator and this operator is a self-adjoint meaning that it is Hermitian what does it mean that the adjoint of this operator is equal to the same operator it's exactly the same like what the Hermitian matrix you remember from the linear vector spaces the Hermitian mat matrices so we will just look at some of the properties of those operators and we'll note that they are similar to the properties for the Hermitian Hermitian matrices so um, this, uh, this function here, or operator function here, is for x uh, belongs to the period from A to B. So, again, the definition of the Hermitian operator is if you have operator and you have the inner product of the function g and the operator uh, operated over the function f this will give you the operator operated over the function g and inner product was the function f so the properties for this uh, linear real linear uh, adjoint self-adjoint operators, we will assume first that we have uh, distinct, as we did before, distinct uh, eigenvalues, as we did for the properties of the Hermitian matrices, if you turn back your matrices uh, classes. So the first thing is the eigen the eigenvalues are real. And this is what we proved last time when we talk about the uh, eigenvalues for a Hermitian matrix. If you return back to the class for the Hermitian matrices at the very early beginning, we proved that the eigenvalues for the Hermitian matrices, uh, they, they were real. And, and it was on Hermitian is a class of what? A class of what? Huh? What complex? You have you have orthogonal, orthogonal. yeah, the orthogonal matrices, and we proved that for the orthogonal matrices, their eigenvalues are what are real, 
and because this is a Hermitian, we will show that the same, the, <coughs> the, eigen, the eigenvalues are what are real. So the proof for this, if we op operate over some function yn, this will give us lambda multiplied by omega yn, we will call it 1, and if we operate over another function ym, this will give us, this is lambda n, this is lambda m, omega ym, and this is number 2. So if we multiply equation number 1, if we multiply 1 by the complex conjugate ym, and if we multiply 2 by the complex conjugate yn, so the opposite here, n will, will multiply by the complex of m, here is m will multiply by the complex of, of n, then integrate from a to b. So we will note that when we do this, we will note that it will be a to b, ym complex conjugate operator O y n dx will be equal to lambda n a to b multiplied by omega y m complex multiplied by y n dx. We call this number three. We will have the y y n complex operator O y m dx equal to lambda m a to b omega y n complex y m dx and we'll call this four. The set of two equations we'll call them asterisk. And by definition the adjoint self adjoint operator we will note that uh, this is yn multiplied by ym. So this can be written as a to b, uh, uh, the adjoint over n multiplied by ym. So this is just the adjoint, the adjoint definition for the operator O. And because this is a self-adjoint operator, so the operator O uh, dagger or O uh, uh, whatever cross here is the same as the same as what? As O because it is the same operator. So this would be what? This would be O Y N multiplied by Y M D X and this from A to B is just equal to what? Just equal to lambda M multiplied by A to B omega Y N Y M D X. We'll call this five. So if we take the complex, take the complex conjugate of five, what this will give you will give you integration from A to B operator O operated over Y N. We take the complex conjugate of this. This is already the complex conjugate, so we will turn it to the same to the same function here. We'll take the complex conjugate of this. This will give you Y M dx and this will be lambda complex conjugate multiplied by <coughs> multiplied by omega and we stated clearly that omega is a real function and this will be multiplied by what? <coughs> ym complex conjugate multiplied by yn dx and we'll call this 6. So if you look at 6 
look at this side and look at this side. Operator O operated over YN and YM uh, star DX. So this this side is equal to what? This side. So if we subtract those two equations from each other, we will cancel this term with this term, and we will have the subtraction of this and this equal to zero. Yes, guys? So if I ask you to subtract, just subtract six from three, this will give you zero equal to a to B lambda N minus lambda M A to B omega Y M star Y N DX and we'll call this number seven. So if you have M equal to N what do you have now? You have lambda m minus lambda m. Yes, complex conjugate multiplied by a b omega y m complex conjugate y m dx. What's this? This is a real function as we stated. The waiting function is a real function. What's y star multiplied by y? A function, you multiply it by its complex conjugate. Should give you what? What? If you multiply A plus I B, multiplied by A minus I B, will give you A square plus B square under the square root. So this will give you the amplitude of the function. Yes? Which is what? A positive number. Yes? Otherwise, the function, if the amplitude is zero, it will give you zero. And there is no function. So it will give you the amplitude, which is what? A positive number. So this is what? Positive number, you integrate over a real, multiplied by positive number, multiplied by a real function, this should be greater than what? Greater than zero. So if this is greater than zero, and this multiplied by this is equal to zero, so this should be what? Should be zero. So in this case, lambda m equal to lambda m star, and what does this mean? Lambda has to be real, because the only thing that makes the complex conjugate equal to the, the function, the constant itself, or the number itself, is what? The real. So in this case, lambda m is real. Now, Now, if the second, the second property, and it will be very obvious from the previous one, is the orthogonality of the eigen, those eigen functions. And it will be apparent from here, if m does not equal to n, in this case, 7 will give me what? Lambda n does not equal to what? Lambda m. And in this case, if lambda n is not equal to lambda m, asterisk. So in this case, uh, Omega, the integration of some function multiplied by omega ym multiplied by yn dx, and this should equal to what? Zero for any for any m does not equal to what? N. Now I have the same orthogonality condition like what we did before. If n equal to m, this in integration will be equal to what? 
some number, yes? Because we saw from here that when n equal to m, this is just a positive number. You will integrate, you will get a positive number, yes? So this is the positive number. I call it nm. So this is exactly the definition of what? Of orthogonality, which is a to b omega ym multiplied by yn dx will be equal to what? nm delta mn. So when m equal to n, this will give you n, n what? nm. And when n does not equal to m, this will give you what? Zero. You remember those, uh, those definition for the, I, the uh, canonical delta function that I define when we study the linear vector spaces, and we'll talk about the orthogonality condition for the linear vector spaces. So again, those functions are real eigenfunctions. So we prove that the eigenvalues are real. The eigenfunctions are also will show that they are real. So assume lambda n are distinct again as we did in the Hermitian matrices. Operator O operated over Y n will be equal to lambda n omega y n take if you take the complex conjugates of this you will get the operator operated over y n complex conjugate be equal to lambda n omega multiplied by y n aspect. somebody will ask why you did not take the complex conjugate of this and why you did not take the complex conjugate of this we just show that lambdas are real so the complex conjugate for real is the same uh, 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 value, and this is a real function from the beginning, so the complex conjugate will be the same. So, in this case, what does it mean? If you look at this, means that y, the complex conjugate of the function yn, is also an eigenfunction of the, of the same operator. Yes? Because you operate with an operator over a function. But this is the complex, complex, complex conjugate of the function yn, and it gives you the same lambda n multiplied by omega operated over or multiplied by yn asterisk. Yes, so y the yn, complex conjugate yn is, and so yn complex and yn are both eigenfunctions, are both eigenfunctions. eigenfunctions with same with the same eigenvalues with the same eigenvalues lambda n but we assumed assumed that lambda n are distinct they are not degenerate so in this case this means that y n complex is the same like y n, so the eigenfunctions are real. Because we, if you have the complex conjugate of, of the function y n and y n, both of them are eigenfunctions for the same for the same eigenfunction uh, 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 formula here. Uh, we assume that lambda n is what is distinct, and lambda n is the same eigenvalues for y n and y n y n and y n asterisk so in this case y n should be the same as y n asterisk okay guys and this is the proof that it is it is what it is the real function so the last thing is the eigenfunctions and this is the most important eigenfunctions form a complete set. It's exactly the same like in linear vector spaces when we said that uh, they will form a linear basis or 
unit basis for the linear vector space. So any well-behaved, and we will define what we mean by well-behaved later, any well-behaved functions, f of x, we'll call it capital F of x, at least piecewise continuous, can be approximated by, can be approximated by the expansion of this f of x as n equal to 0 to infinity of a n y n of x, where y n of x are the eigenfunctions that we just showed that they are what? They are real and they are what? Orthogonal, yes? And the eigenvalues are real, the eigenfunctions are real, they are orthogonal, and now we will, we will see that they complete uh, a closed, a complete set, like the eigen, the eigen, and the eigen ve vectors in the linear vector spaces, they complete what? Basis, complete basis set. Okay, guys. So, so such that, such that the limit for n goes to infinity of a to b dx divided by f of x minus summation from n equals 0 to infinity a n y n of x multiplied by omega is equal to 0. And in practice, I have only two minutes, guys, and then I, I will leave. So if this is n equals 0 to infinity, a n, y n equal to f of x. Here, at almost any, every point, this is true at every point, in the domain A to B, X in the domain A to B. And we will use the orthogonality to be able to calculate what's A N. And usually orthogonality, you will just multiply this function by the complex conjugate and then integrate. So this will give you Y M, Y N, the X from A to B equal to from a to b omega of x f of x y m star dx this is what i just stated from orthogonality that this is what some number multiplied by a n yes so when n equal to m you will have what you will have this this is equal to n and when m, m equal to m, this will be, all the terms will be zero, except when n equal to m. So this will be a n multiplied by n equal to a b omega of x of f of x multiplied by, let's say, y, y asterisk n dx. And you will just get a n is equal to one over N and that's it. So uh, the well-behaved function is just a function that's defined by the Dirichlet condition. And if you look at the hands out that I showed you last time about the linear linear operators, you will see that there is three conditions for a well-behaved function. One of them is to be single-valued and continuous. The other one is to have a finite number of minimum and maximum. And the third one is the integration over this function must exist. Okay, guys, I will stop here. Next time we'll continue. Do you have any question so far? Okay, have a wonderful time. Next lecture will be the last lecture during this semester. And hopefully the exam will be next Monday. Have a wonderful time, guys.